Welcome to my video on Maxwell's equations. Wave optics treats light as a field of electromagnetic waves. Therefore, Maxwell's equations are the basis of wave optics. We start with the general formulation of Maxwell's equations and introduce certain common assumptions then. The first equation is Gauss law. It describes the generation of the electric vector field by the scalar field of charge density. The equation contains the displacement field to take into account the feedback effect of the generated electric field on the charge density. The second equation is Gauss law for magnetism. Since there are no magnetic charges, the right hand side is zero. The equation also takes the feedback of the generated magnetic field on the current density into account. Therefore, it contains the field of magnetic induction. The third equation is Faraday's law of induction. It describes how the variation of a magnetic field induces an electric field. Without charges, this variation leads to an electric field in closed loops. Therefore, this equation contains the curl of the electric field in contrast to the divergence in Gauss law. The fourth equation has two parts. Ampere's law describes the generation of a static magnetic field by an electric current density. And the second is the counterpart to Faraday's law. It describes how the variation of an electric field induces a magnetic field. The result is a magnetic field in closed loops. Faraday's law predicts that this dynamic looped magnetic field induces a new looped electric field, which induces a magnetic field, and so on and so forth. The last two equations are thus the foundation for describing the generation and propagation of electromagnetic waves. Materials usually consist of atoms. Atoms have positively charged cores and negative electrons. An external electric field slightly shifts the position of the electrons and leads to an internal polarization. Inside the medium, the total field therefore is the sum of the external field and the polarization, and the result is called displacement field. In general, media may also contain other charged units like free electrons, ions or molecules with dipole moment. Furthermore, the polarization is in general an arbitrary function of the external electric field. When we approximate this function to a Taylor series, the first term is the intrinsic polarization of certain poled materials. The second term with the dimensionless susceptibility tensor H1 describes a linear dependence of the polarization on the electric field. In most materials, this term is by far the most dominant one. The remaining terms describe the quadratic, cubic and higher order dependence of the polarization on the electric field. The large research area of nonlinear optics is based on these terms. The magnetic counterpart of the electric polarization is the magnetization M. For historical reasons, it is linked to the magnetic field and the magnetic induction formally in a slightly different way. Magnetization is in general an arbitrary function of the external magnetic field. We can also expand this function to a Taylor series. Again, in most materials, the first order term with the dimensionless magnetic susceptibility tensor zeta1 is by far the most dominant one. An important equation which is closely related to our topic is Ohm's law. 
It describes how an electric field induces an electric current in a medium with free charges. In general, the conductivity tensor sigma is the factor of this linear transformation. As long as we stay in the field of linear optics, we can ignore all higher order susceptibilities. Furthermore, we restrict ourselves to unpoled materials. These conditions simplify Maxwell's equations significantly. The displacement field is now just the linear function of the electric field and the magnetic induction is a linear function of the magnetic field. For convenience, we introduce the relative permittivity epsilon and the relative permeability mu. Many materials are optically isotropic. When the reaction of internal charges has no preferred direction, the polarization can follow the external electrical field exactly. Therefore, electric field, polarization and displacement field are always in parallel. From the mathematical point of view, this means that permittivity, permeability and conductivity are all scalar quantities. In an anisotropic medium, the amount of induced polarization depends on the direction of the external field. For a general external field, the resulting polarization therefore is no longer in parallel and the same holds for the resulting displacement field. From the mathematical point of view, this means that permittivity, permeability and conductivity are all tensors. Let us finally use Maxwell's equations to derive a very important formula, the continuity equation. What we need for our purpose is a simple equality from vector algebra. The divergence of a rotation of any field is equal to zero. You can easily prove that by inserting all three components of the vector. When we apply this expression to the magnetic field, we can immediately insert the fourth Maxwell equation. In the next step, we apply the divergence operator to both terms in the parentheses. For this step, it is important that temporal and spatial derivatives commute. Now we insert the first Maxwell equation and we are done. So far, we derived the continuity equation in its differential form. When we convert it to its integral form, the meaning of the equation becomes obvious. The total electrical current crossing a closed surface of a volume on the left-hand side is equal to the change of the total charge inside the volume on the right-hand side. With these basics of Maxwell's equations, we are ready for the mathematical description of light as an electromagnetic wave.